Hi everyone! Um, so there's nobody in the live right now, but as a little kind of opener, um, I'm gonna be going live today with Jank, and I'm super excited because we've been like internet friends for a while, um, and so I'm, I'm really excited to, to get to chat with him today. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about business and entrepreneurship and everything that he's up to right now. Um, I just have to wait for him to join uh, so that we can do like the double duet live. Uh, the dancer and me is, you know, calling it a duet. But um, yeah, so I'm really excited today. Uh, Jank is an incredible entrepreneur. Uh, and, you know, I definitely recommend going over and following him uh, and, you know, seeing all the incredible stuff that he does because it's very inspiring to me. Uh, as an entrepreneur myself, but I know uh, it's definitely an incredible story and he's he's really awesome. Um, so I just have to wait for him to join <laughs> and then we can, uh, you know, chat a little bit about business and his current venture, which I'll let him tell you about, um, is called Thread.com and it's really, really cool. It talks a lot about um, social change and I'll let him I'll let him talk about it I don't want to give too much away um but when he joins uh, I don't know I can't really see um who joins I want to make sure I don't miss him um but when he joins then the conversation will really start uh, until then it's just me talking um but yeah, so it's been um, kind of a while since we've been like internet friends. Um, and so I've always uh, wanted to do some sort of like live, some kind of conversation um, where we can talk about, you know, our shared interests, entrepreneurship. Uh, so yeah, I think it's really interesting to talk to other young entrepreneurs about, you know, how they got to where they are because it's such a, a, a rare thing to see, um, like young kids in business. And so it's awesome um, to listen to their story and, and really get a, uh, the inside scoop on, on how they came to, to be where they are today. So it's, it's different for every young entrepreneur. Um, there's always a different uh, you know, drive or a different point in their life where they realize that they want to be you know, an entrepreneur. And so and I love talking to, to other entrepreneurs to see how they, um, see how they, they uh, brought their dreams to fruition. So I want to, oh, I can invite him. Oh man, I didn't even know that. Okay. So let's see. I'm not very Instagram savvy, you guys, honestly. Oh my gosh. It worked. Hey, it did. <laughs> hey, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing very well, thank you. Wait, I'm going to slightly angle this. I'm going to slightly angle this down slightly. There we go. There we go. Awesome. So thank you so much for coming on my live today. Thank you for um, having me. I feel like. It's pretty crazy, is, is what I was saying um, to the people joining first, is that we've been, like, internet friends kind of for a while. Oh, yeah, and, for a super long time. Yeah, and so I've always, I, I can't believe I haven't, you know, asked you to do, like, a live or, like, some kind of, um, like, collaboration yet, uh, but better late than never. True say, true say, here we are now. <laughs> Okay, awesome. Well, this is just going to be, you know, kind of a casual conversation. Um, I have a couple questions to ask you about, you know, how you got to where you are today. I always think it's really interesting to talk to other young entrepreneurs about, you know, how they brought their dreams to fruition, because there's so few of us that it's like everyone has their own kind of crazy story yeah. of how it happened. Um, and so I guess that brings me to my first question. Uh, you know, what was your first encounter with entrepreneurship and really drew you into the idea of starting a company? Um, well, you know, it's one of those things where at the time when I was gone, when I had the idea, when I first had the idea, I was like eight, but I only really started acting on it when I was around 11 years old. And at the time, I don't really think any 11 year old, I could be wrong, but I definitely didn't think to myself, I want to be an entrepreneur. 
I kind of had the idea and then I kind of followed through with the idea and then suddenly I got labeled an entrepreneur. You kind of find that quite often you'll be labeled an entrepreneur before, some, before you label yourself an entrepreneur. So that's definitely what happened for me. But uh, so that was like, that was kind of how that happened. But I've also, both my parents are entrepreneurs, so it's kind of been, the spirit is kind of very much within the family. So it was quite a, quite an easy jump to get to, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely, that's super cool. Um, and having that role model from your parents is, yeah. uh, at least for me, um, my dad was a business consultant. Uh, yeah. So I definitely did see um, kind of, you know, him working with other companies um, and creating products and stuff. So that, that idea was planted in my head that, you know, that's what entrepreneurship is. Um, so I guess this, that was kind of a two part question, but what was your first ever like business idea? Uh, well, I think it was, well, it was I Cool Kid, which is, which sort of thread is technically I Cool Kid, but that was the change we made. But also from the beginning of it, basically, I was eight, nine years old, classic. You go to day school every Monday morning, the teacher would say, so what did everyone do on the weekend? And uh, I would always, everyone else would say, oh, I went to this rugby match, I went to a football match, I kind of sat at home and nothing. But I would always say, oh, I went to this, uh, I went to this graffiti class, I went to this, uh, this concert, this show, this musical, this music, this, like, I would always be something different slightly. So then, the, uh, as the weeks followed, uh, people would say, so, Jake, what are you doing this weekend? Because I kind of want to join you because what you're doing seems like quite good fun. So that kind of escalated to the point where my mum would start writing emails to my friend's mum saying, here's what Jake's doing on the weekend. Please do join if you'd like to. Here's how you're starting to join. Then from there, it kind of escalated. And it kind of, in a weird way, the email went about as viral as you could get in a mum's emailing circle. So then we thought, that's such a quite cool idea. I wonder if this has been done before. So then we had the idea to kind of make a company, or make a website at least at the time for just a safe space for kids to get their information from their cool news. And it was everything except for major news, uh, celebrity gossip and politics was kind of where we started. Uh, that was, we call that my cool kid. And uh, that happened in May of 2016. Then a year later, in May of 2017, uh, we launched the website, I cool kid. Then that ran pretty well for a few years and what we what we found was happening was as i matured the content on the website would mature with me and uh what was happening was we had really good content like really quite mature established content on what wasn't a very mature established site through and the name i call kid as we realized over time ironically enough wasn't actually that cool anymore and i wasn't really that much of a kid anymore so all we had left was i and we thought okay this is not going to work very well so in around June of 2019, we started building up Thread, which is what we were going to change the website to. And uh, we then also built up Thread Media, which is kind of like the parent company and uh, the thread me Thread.com, the website itself. We redesigned, restructured and kind of rebuilt the whole thing. And then a year later from that point, so June 2020, so quite recently still, uh, that was when thread the website was born and then hopefully by the end of this year if not very soon next year then we're going to launch thread media which is like the media side of the company that's awesome that i mean it seems like you have already accomplished so much um yeah. and you have a lot you know cooking on the horizon um <laughs> I just realized I didn't even have you introduce yourself. I'm so used to like being interviewed that I'm, I'm not a very good interviewer. Um, it's not so. Uh, okay, well, in the shortest, briefest, sweetest way possible, uh, I'm Jake. I'm 15 years old, and I am the uh, founder. And I'm the founder of a website I started called ThreadMedia.com, and that is that's me. That's 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 why I'm here. <laughs> So you've had some some pretty cool experiences, uh, and you know, pre this interview or this live, um, I looked back and I saw that you used to, or I don't know if you still, um, but 
you've met a lot of really cool people via yeah. red carpet and and uh this is kind of you know a fun question but who's the coolest person you've ever met well i, I was fortunate enough to interview some really really cool people i think the i think it really depends how you define cool i've i've like interviewed like idris alba james corden daisy ridley like they're like awesome and actually credit where credit is due idris alba is very cool so if i if i went off with like Normal definition of cool. I think Idris Alba definitely tops that. He's 11 out of 10. But I think, like, the coolest person that's not, like, famous cool is a guy called uh, Warner Vogels. He's uh, European, and he is the... You won't recognize the name, but he is the chief technical officer of Amazon. So the second you say that, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, fans. Uh, but that's he was just, like... He was cool in the sense that... He's like the CTO of Amazon and no one knows who he is. I think that's like a different level of cool. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that that's pretty crazy. Um yeah. Yeah. and I mean I mean all of those people that you named are are incredible. Um yeah, that's 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 awesome. Uh I feel like every time every time you you meet someone like that, you just learn something else like or yeah. or you learn like another another skill to of how to like um, carry yourself. Yeah, um, no, it's, it's insane. Some of the ways that you guys think, it's just like... Yeah, yeah, yeah it's really, really awesome. Um, so, I guess from uh, a pandemic standpoint, uh, because obviously uh, it's so evident around us, um, how have you shifted uh, your, your business or your mindset, or has it created any setbacks um, for you in, in, in the sense that, you know, you haven't been able to do some things that you had wanted to do, um, business wise or, or personally. Yeah. Well, I was thinking about, I was speaking about this with someone else today as well. It's, it's quite interesting because much like a lot of things, there's pros and cons to it. We had quite a few pros in that I was able to, uh, as a team, as a company, we weren't distracted at all. So we were able to kind of really go through with everything we wanted to, because where there would normally be distractions, they were all cancelled, so we kind of we kind of knew what we needed to do, and there's a much straighter path to get there. Having said that, actually, and another pro was we were able to move offices very easily because the whole team was gone. So it meant that it became very easy to just move one person across an office, which was very blessed. And we're in the, the office now, which is lovely. Uh, but cons-wise, uh, I feel like there's uh, what's happened is because we're such a small relatively we're quite a small group of people and we're and it's very much a creative based group of people there's only so much creativity that you can like exchange over a zoom call so what we found is that with like a morning meeting for like 10 minutes you can do that over zoom that's fine but when you kind of need to sit down for an hour and a half and just think about new ideas i feel like maybe we would have had the same ideas in-house that we do on zoom but they would have come much quicker and been able to develop much better with people around you as opposed to through a screen. I feel like it really kills the creativity. I feel like that's a lot of people have had that same issue. Though. Yeah, yeah, I, I would definitely agree. Um, uh, my company, has, we have a small team as well um, in our office and luckily we were able to keep working because we're uh, food and beverage. So yeah. in the US that, that was deemed as like um, uh, mandatory, like to, yeah, or not mandatory, but yeah, yeah, important. Um, so we luckily did get to keep working, but I completely understand, you know, the the creative uh, aspect of that because there's only, um, you know, so many ideas that you can come up with staring yeah. at a screen. Um, so I, I think my next question would be kind of about your personal life. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're the same age, and uh, I don't know if you go to like public school or if you're homeschooled, um, but how has business or, or you know your experiences in general um how have they interfered or challenged uh your social life well i think it's been one of those things where i'm i'm in boarding school so especially it's really easy for me to be able to differentiate between my school life and my home life and like my business home life because it means that whenever i am at school i kind of have here okay here are my school friends i need to do my school work at school exams kind of get down, do what you need to do. And then at home, it's much more like, okay, I've got my home friends through, who I know through other different people, and I've got the kind of, I've got thread, and I have music and DJing and whatnot. But so it becomes quite easy to be able to differentiate between the two. But I mean, even then there is quite a lot of overlap 
between the two. I have friends who are very much business orientated who I'm at school with and vice versa. So yeah, but it's, yeah, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I go to uh, school as well. So I definitely see the appeal with that. Um, Cause I love going to school. Yeah, of course. It's also, I feel like people don't really realize that you're at school for six and a half months a year. You're oh, sorry, you're in school for six and a half months and out of school for five and a half months. So it's, you're actually very able to do lots of big projects and things outside of school with a lot of time, with, while spending a lot of time on them. Because I feel like I get a question a lot saying, you're at school, how do you do all this? And I'm like, well, you say you're at school, you're really not actually at school that, that much when you think about it in the, ter in the long term. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and I guess, um, you know, you've grown a lot on social media and watching it for me watching thread um grow from the launch on like instagram um it's been a very steady incline and it's really yeah. interesting to me um like <laughs> i'm not saying give away all your your great secrets yes. um, but but what are your tips for for growing a page or or growing um an account on social media and this this helps yeah. for me too because i've been i've been trying to do the same thing well i feel like I just try to, I kind of go by the fact that I try and have all my content to be uh, either educating someone, entertaining or inspiring someone. And I try and always keep it personal because like, I feel like you can't really engage with something that's not really very personal to at least someone. Uh, and also that's kind of the base I go off is that it's either educating, inspiring or entertaining, hopefully quite entertaining most of the time. Uh, so, and also like a small thing I'd say, is people don't really take advantage of stories as much as you think they should because there's, I find that they're massively useful, especially once you go over 10K because that's when you can start to using swipe ups and whatnot and that becomes very useful to kind of move around in the least kind of weird way possible. You can move people around different websites and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. I didn't even know that you couldn't do swipe ups until you hit 10K. Um, tech savvy me, I guess. Um, but I swear I thought I was doing it before. And so I well, don't... Well, firstly, congratulations for getting to 10K, firstly. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, and, oh, also, everyone, go follow Jank. Um, get him to 100K because he deserves it. Him. He's very, very smart and has done some incredible things. And also go follow Thread because... Oh, I love, um, like, I love the content. I think it's so fun. And exactly what you just said. It's personable. Um, and it's you. things you want to interact with. Um, yeah, exactly. So this is kind of a fun question. Um, if you could create any product or company, what would it be? And would you ever consider actually starting that company? Uh, I feel like, uh, I don't know. So I give you more hours in a day. So I feel like everyone who I speak to is always like so busy. And I'm like, hey, you need to chill out a bit and have more time in a day. That obviously can't happen. Uh, actually, having said that, I had a bit of a weird moment the other day where I had like an idea and I saw it. It was actually already been done. And I saw it on Amazon, which is quite sad, but it's fine. We live. It was one of those like, actually, if you if I was watching this, you should probably get this on Amazon because I feel it's quite cool. And I'm going to get one. It's one of those, like, a pad you plug in and you put your, like, mug on it and it keeps warm. It yes. keeps like, warm. And I saw that and I was like, I had the idea for that a year ago, but damn. Okay, it's fine. We live. We move. I, yeah. I've had the same thing. I was, like, five-ish years old and I thought it would be the most genius idea to put peanut butter and jelly in the same jar so that you didn't have to go across the store to get, you know, vice versa, peanut butter or jelly. And then I saw it, and I literally thought that they stole my idea. Well, and that's, that's, that's called identity theft. Well, that's, that's intellectual property theft, actually. Exactly, exactly. And I was like, well, how, how am I going to fix this? Are we going to sue? Um, <laughs> I, think, I think you should have. <laughs> well, you know, uh, I don't know if I would have had that great of a case, um, a five-year-old. But uh, <laughs> I know you love, um, well, I can assume that you love DJing because you look like you're having so much fun doing it. And I just want to like pump my fist along with you. Okay, um, uh, so what's your favorite artist or song at the moment? <sighs> okay. 
in general, I've really gone into a lot of French songs for some reason. God knows why. I think it's because I'm, trying to, revise, I'm trying to revise my French CCSEs. And I and one of my French friends was like, you can listen to French rap. So I was like, okay. So that's, that, that's in my free time, that's what I listen to. Uh, in, uh, for DJ, uh, a few, I'm quite a really big fan of like retro, like old school songs and like a DJ mix of it. Uh, wait, let me just, I don't want to get the names of the artists wrong. So I'm just going to pull them up on my phone quickly. Bear with, bear with. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, yeah, right. One, I think my favorite one right now is called Renegade Master by Wild Child. It's an old school, it's classic, and it just goes kind of hard. It just kind of slaps, I won't lie. Uh, <laughs> and Finder by Nine Toes. It's what, they're, they're songs which I say the titles and you'll be like, what's that? And then you'll hear it and you'll know. But yeah, those yeah. Are two exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I, I always think it's so much fun. Um, like, I guess having another hobby outside of business. Um, because as much as business takes up so much time along with school, um, it's important to have that creative outlet um, where you don't yeah. feel like you're working. Yeah, massively. Also, I feel like at, at first I used it as a kind of thing. I had it as a separate thing to the business because it meant I can, it meant it was like a hobby which allowed me to take my mind off it and I was able to like kind of just do this separately. But then I also realized that after a while, they were becoming very merged in that I started to become the, Kind of the DJ, like the DJ founder of Threads. I was like, okay, that's fine. That's now part of my business as well. And then actually, the same happened for actor and because I used to do a lot of acting and musicians. Just a musician, just because I play the piano. So then I, I immediately had like all these separate hobbies that, and then I had a business. And then immediately you get labeled as the actor, musician, entrepreneur, founder, CEO, gymnast, circus clown. <laughs> Like, like, Dom, Dom as well, something cool. But, like, it's quite nice to be able to have, like, a hobby which integrates really well into your kind of business passion. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I need to do that. Um, I need to integrate my, my ballet background into... Oh, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah, dancing with lollipops. Maybe that's my new thing. Look at that. There you Look go. at that. We've created something, a, a brand new idea. There you go. Um, I would say, I don't know how much time you have, but... I have one more question. She's far away. And then um, maybe we can look at the, the Q&A because I see that some people have some questions. Uh, so do you have any tips uh, for aspiring entrepreneurs? Uh -huh. Okay, uh, I think I've got two main tips. And it's the kind of thing where if I saw myself in, if I kind of saw a young me, I'd say these things. I'd also say sort your hair out, but these two things mainly. Uh, I think the first thing I'd say is be really, really, uh, don't be scared of failure, but be terrified of regret. Because I think everyone naturally is going to be scared of failure. And then they'll tell themselves in a few years, damn, I should have done that. And then they're actually going to be scared of regret at that point. So I feel like any young people watching that, please take that information and advice now and use it because you know, I promise you'll be worth it. Uh, so yeah, that's don't be scared of failure, be, be terrified of regret. And the second thing I say is much more of a psychological thing is that if you treat your idea like a dream today, you'll have a dream tomorrow. But if you treat your idea like a company today, you'll have a company tomorrow. So if you think about that psychologic, if you think about that kind of like, not psychologically, what's, what's what I think about? I don't remember. I've had a mouth, I've had a bit of a mouth like wipe. But if you think about that, then uh, the way that you treat your idea will determine how your idea will progress is basically the, is the message yeah. from that. Yeah, I, I totally agree with both of those. Um, and I usually just say, you know, keep asking questions. But that those are definitely really um, deep. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I don't know how to, oh, okay, I do know how to open these questions. Um, actually, I don't. Okay, well then, if I don't know how to answer those, um, I will ask another one. Um, so, this I probably should have asked at the beginning, um, but, you know, why did you think it was important to start Thread? Did you find like a, a, a niche in, in social media or a niche in society that, that you wanted to fill? Or was it more of like a mission that you were passionate about that you wanted to fulfill? Um, or, yeah, well, you know... It was, 
it's one of the things where when we had the website I Cool Kid and we were changing it, we thought, let's instead of taking the same idea and just redesigning it, we might as well try and make it more mature, make it more established and have more of a purpose as opposed to just a kind of like a, I mean, as much as, 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 fat, as well founded as a kids news website is, which I can't at all argue with, uh, I feel like we just wanted to give it a bit more kind of like purpose as such. So then we kind of thought we're going to have the same concept of news, but we're going to, every single story needs to be about social change and social good. So uh, for, actually, for those of you who don't know, social change is the, uh, uh, social change is the changing in social structure over a period of time. So, which sounds really complicated, but the way I would think of it is if you think of something as socially good, or if you feel like you're doing the right thing, that's generally what social change is. So every single story on the website will have some aspect of social good or social change throughout them. And that's kind of the niche that we found that there are very few websites which we found are, are kind of like, we, we like to think of ourselves as the gateway to social change. So there are big websites which talk about uh, climate change, the world's going to end, what are we going to do? And the websites which don't talk about it at all. So we kind of want to be the middle where you're a teenager, you kind of don't really know what it is, and you're going to come to the website, you're going to find a passion in it, and then from there you're going to go to one of the kind of <laughs> yeah, kind of like apocalyptic, big, intense websites. Yeah, yeah, that's, I think that's really key, especially now when people are on social media so much, including myself, um, yeah. that, you know, having that, uh, you know, balance between entertainment and information um, and, and finding that middle ground is, I'm sure has been difficult, but um, it is a really uh, interesting and, uh, captivating way to to grow an audience yeah um, so i would say my final question um is what is the most important lesson you've learned through business uh i feel like uh oh god i've got thousands of them but i feel like one of the really important ones is to and this is purely the ones that i've learned through starting a business is uh, uh, is kind of writing your idea down the second you get it. And we kind of talked about this a second ago in your little peanut butter and jam idea and my weird mug holder coaster with the dirt. But I feel like, I know we joke, but that's the one thing that I did, which I felt I was so happy about with Thread, or I feel at the time, was I just wrote all my ideas down immediately. And that meant that I'd never forget an idea. And it also meant that if I had a new idea, I could change the old one as opposed to just having a whole new thing. Cause then it means that you're able to have one thing which is changing as opposed to a lot of different ideas like floating around. And I feel like that is what really